here. Okay, all right. Well, let's move on then. JSW Steel. Remember, those set of numbers were quite disappointing. Steel prices weakened, and they didn't really get the benefit of lower costs. To understand what went on in the past quarter and what's the way ahead, Mr. Shashagri Rao, the joint MD and group CFO, joins us. Uh, hi, Mr. Rao. Good speaking to you. Well, it was a challenging quarter, right? But the street expects things to improve from year on. What kind of relief on the coking coal side, particularly, are you expecting in quarter three? And it will give us a broad analysis for quarter four as well. Coking coal prices are very volatile. So from $650, they came down to $200. Now it crossed again $300. So that is a kind of variation in the coking coal prices in the market. But whatever prices as on date, if you take into account, and then see what is the benefit in cost that can come in the Q3 over Q2, then there could be $80 per ton of coal used in the consumption. That is the kind of benefit we are expecting to come in, in the Q3. As far as Q4 is concerned, it depends upon in the next two months how the cooking coal prices will move uh, from here on. Okay, now let me come to the other raw material, sir. Uh, iron ore costs have cooled off and uh, you all are also uh, sourcing part of your requirement from captive sources, uh, which is good news. Also, prices have stabilized uh, and uh, that uh, does that give you a sense of profit on that front? As far as iron ore prices are concerned, uh, the overall reduction which has happened in the Q2 that has happened in phases, something in July, something in August, something in September, so the full benefit of uh, lower iron ore prices have not flown in the consumption in the last quarter. So that benefit also will come in the Q3. So lower iron ore prices, lower cooking coal prices, and also we have started our power plant which uses the, the blast furnace gas, which was getting uh, flared in the Q2. So the lower power cost, that also will come in the Q3. So there will be a significant reduction in the cost over Q2 in Q3. That is what we expect uh, the reduction in the cost of production where that can happen. As far as the steel prices are concerned, we are seeing stability in uh, steel prices right now. So whatever fall that has happened in the last quarter around 10,000 rupees, lower realizations on a blended basis in the last quarter. That is what is the situation in the last quarter. Whereas the costs have not come down to that extent, uh, even though iron ore prices, some reduction has happened and only $40 reduction in the cooking coal, taking those two things into account, the fall in the uh, uh, cost of production in the last quarter was only 5,000 rupees or 5,100 rupees. So net net we have lost in the EBITDA margin in the last quarter. Whereas in this quarter, we expect uh, the steel prices to be stable and better volumes and at the same time, costs are going to come down. So all this together, I think uh, Q3 and Q4 of this financial year will be much better than what you have seen in Q2. Okay, that's great news that Q3 and Q4 will be much better. Some reports indicate that domestic prices are at a premium to imported steel. Uh, is that correct, sir? No, there is a lot of misinformation saying that the landed cost of imports are cheaper than the domestic prices, which is not true at all. Even today, the FOB price of, uh, of China is $580, $590 per ton. If you take another $40 as the transportation cost and multiply by 83 rupees, which is a rupee dollar, and if you have to pay 7.5% duty and then add the port charges and other costs relating to imports, then the landed cost is almost equal or maybe slightly higher than the domestic prices today. So if somebody is doing calculation, it's not correct. So if it is compared with the Japanese and Koreans where they don't pay the 7.5% duty, their base price itself is higher. Therefore, the question of landed cost of imports are at a discount to the domestic price. I don't think it is correct. All right, then we take your word for it, Mr. Rao. You believe that domestic pricing is on par with the imported steel. So we take that. But... You know, given all the factors that you've just told us, is it fair to assume that the standalone EBITDA per ton, say trends from around the 3,500 rupees per ton to around 10,000 rupees per ton, is that a possibility? No, I don't want to say a number, but I can tell you that it will be much better than total. 
Okay. Okay. Uh, some more qualitative questions. International operations have been struggling uh, in line with, uh, uh, you know, the global outlook itself. Now, what's your outlook and what's your strategy for U.S. and European operations? So, in the case of U.S., if I look at the plate mill, it made a $24 million of uh, EBITDA in the last quarter. So plate prices are reasonably at a good level. So they have not fallen the way HR coil prices have fallen. That is why the Baytown facility was uh, operationally has done well in the last quarter. Then at the same time, as far as Ohio facility is concerned, HR coil prices have fallen quite substantially. And also the raw materials which uh, they acquired at a very high cost, they have to provide, uh, uh, provide in the books, the fall in the prices. So both together, they made uh, an EBITDA loss of $40 million. So out of that, a significant portion is towards inventory losses. So net net, if I take 40 million negative in Ohio and $25 million positive in Baytown, so there was a net of 15 million loss from uh, US. So in this quarter, what we expect uh, those inventory losses won't be there in Ohio. So it will be positive as far as the Q3 and Q4 are concerned in the US operations. At the same time, if I look at Europe, we made a positive EBITDA of 1 million euro. It is not very significant uh, uh, contribution as far as European operations are concerned. So we will remain at those levels in my view as far as Europe is concerned. So any plans that you would have to slow down on your CAPEX and also what's the outlook as far as the debt is concerned? This year, we have slashed our CapEx expenditure by 5,000 crores from 20,000 to 15,000. But if you look at uh, the debt position as on 30th uh, September 22, it was lower by 1,500 crores when compared to 30th June. So even though there was lower margins, we could reduce our uh, debt by 1,500 crores. So how it has happened uh, of reduction of uh, 1,500 crores, we reduced our inventories from 30th June to 30th September by 4,34,000 tons. Not only whatever we produced, we sold in the last quarter and we could reduce our inventories. And our domestic sales volume was the highest ever in, in, the, in the domestic market, it is the highest ever. Uh, it was 47% growth quarter on quarter in the domestic market. It, is, it has crossed 5 million tons in the, local, in the Indian market. So therefore, the debt levels are concerned. We have... Uh, Unwound the uh, investments that have been made in the working capital, a part of it uh, has got has, go, has come back. That with that we reduced our debt by 1500 crores. But there is exchange rate fluctuation, translation losses to the extent of 2500 crores in the uh, entire six months. So if we take that 2500 crores into account, the overall debt could have been lower by 4000 crores, not 1500 crores. But the exchange rate fluctuation has taken away 2500 crores. That's why the debt has gone up to that extent. Okay, Mr. Rao, for the time being, the street is listening to what you're saying. You're guiding for a far improved performance from year on. So we take that. But final question before we let you go. The Adani Group, they've been talking about making an entry into the steel market. What will your strategy be on assets that could potentially come up for sale? Maybe the RINL plant or maybe NMDC's Nagarna steel plant. Will you be a little bit more aggressive? No, we are in the steel industry for a very long time. We are a strategic player. If any opportunity is there, we continue to evaluate. Whatever we feel is a reasonable value for that asset, we will uh, submit our bid. There is always a competition, either existing player or a new player. So we have to continue to face that competition. I don't think we have to worry about that. Hmm. All right, uh, Mr. Rao, always a pleasure speaking with you. Thanks a lot for joining in. Uh, that's GSW Steel. By the way, the market has now moved back into the green. The Sensex Nifty and the mid-caps are trading in the green. It's uh, 